Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary, this is Books with the Fugada, where we talk about books and food every now and then. I promise you there will be food in 2024. I, I will post videos with food. But today it is not food, it's books again. And I thought, why not? The year is over and I always talk about how much I love book covers, how much I am attracted to them, how much sometimes, you know, how often I choose a book just because of the cover, how often we do choose books because of the cover. And so I thought, why not? I reviewed my worst, I reviewed my best books of 2023. Why not talk about all of the covers that I, of books that I read in 2023? And because I read a lot of books, I decided to only talk about the books the book covers of books that were released in 2023. So let's get into it. So I have a total of 45 books that I read last year that were released last year. I have successfully created, even though it almost took everything in me, successfully created a template on, you know, a tier, tier ranking template thingy. I have all the book covers here, as you can see. And there's five categories. There's masterpiece, aka nothing can top this. This is like a piece of art, basically. I would buy the book because of the cover category, which is almost perfection, but still, you know, neutral. This cover you know, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. Like, you know, it's in the middle. Could be improved is I see what they were trying to do and it could be better. So, you know, I totally don't hate it. And the last category, it definitely is I hate it and I wish I could redo it completely because I don't like what they did. That's it. Like it's the only negative-ish category. So with that being said, let's just begin. The first book that I see here is Good Girls Done by Mara Wilson. This was rated 3 out of 5, I think. It's an audiobook that she released, Mara Wilson, the, the actress, about her life, her early life, her actress, her first actress years. It's pretty boring, to be honest. Uh, but here, we're not here to judge the book. We're here to judge the cover. And I have to say, the cover could be improved. Like, it's not bad. It's not good. It doesn't make me feel anything. I don't have any hatred towards this cover, but it's very basic and it's to me a good reflection of what the book gives you to like what was this book for why was this book made and i'm just you know so i'm gonna put it in the good be improved category because it could be improved like she could have done a better job like i feel like she did this book cover and this book in like an afternoon and she was like done i'm done with it anyway rouge comes right after i as you can tell because I brought it here. Rouge was a five out of five for me in 2023. The cover did not disappoint either, and it is a rare occurrence, but in this case, in this horror book situation, the book was a five out of five, and the cover is a five out of five. It's rare when those two things happen, but Rouge is a masterpiece of a cover. I absolutely adore it. It gives me all of the feelings at once. The next one is Natural Beauty, Ling Ling Huang, a YA uh, horror novel about a girl who's obsessed with working at a skincare co like, you know, company and she gets in the middle of some weird shenanigans with the company. As you can tell, it's horror and it's gonna end up horror. <laughs> Uh, I'm not against the cover. I wouldn't buy the book because of the cover, but I don't hate the cover, so I think this is our first neutral. I do see what they were trying to do with it, and it fits the theme of the book, but... Eh, you know. All right, the next one, Dead 11 by Jimmy Giuliano. This is a horror book that I read because of the Goodreads Choice Awards Challenge. Uh, it's a story about a woman who goes missing, the brother tries to find out what happened to her, there's Mystery Island, there's Creepy People, there's Creepy Legends, yada yada. I really like this cover, like, I really like what they did with it, but it pains me that they didn't go full, like, they didn't go all in with this cover. It's a VHS cover, and I don't know why they didn't cover the entirety of the book 
they left these blue margins and I'm like, why? Why would you do this? Why would you not go all in? And so even though I love the cover and I really like what they did with it and what they were trying to do with it, I have to do it in the, I have to put it in the, I wish I could redo it because the blue margin pisses me, pisses me off. <sighs> I hate it uh, just talking about book covers, but really, why didn't they go full on the margins? Mm. Anyway, the next one, The Quiet Tenant by Michel Mac Michelon or something, Clemence, I think. Anyway, a French woman named Michelon as a surname. It's a thriller about a woman who gets kidnapped and we see the, you know, her being kidnapped. We have a lot of chapters from her point of view and at some point her captor decides that she they need to move and she he brings her along and she has to act like she's a friend of the you know of the captor and not say to anyone that she's been kidnapped so you know it is an excellent thriller i really enjoyed this thriller the cover though meh i like it but i don't love it i don't hate it so i'm gonna put it in neutral it's a shed where obviously the woman is being held we see what you know the symbolism I mean it's not symbolism it's very like straightforward but like we see what they were trying to do but it's not mind-blowing so it's in the neutral category the suffering by MG Mars uh, it's a horror story about a group of kids who decide to do uh, you know do the Ouija board thingy they get into you know they get haunted because why would you play with the Ouija thingy if you're not ready to get haunted and you know okay book okay story i enjoyed it wasn't a big fan of it but i enjoyed it and the cover i really dislike it but i don't wish i could redo it i think the cover fits good like fits the mood of the book so i'm gonna put it in could be improved because i feel like just changing the font of that the suffering could really improve the cover of this book so yeah the next one is the september house as you can tell and because i talked about this book a million thousand times i'm not going to talk about it again it's a horror book the beauty novel by carissa orlando about a haunted house a couple who buy the house it gets haunted that's it like that's why the house was like they bought the house it was very cheap and it's haunted what maybe when you buy when you buy a house maybe think twice if the price is very low like suspicious anyway the book was amazing five out of five i loved it ended up in my top five of 2023 However, the cover, I'm hesitating between I'd buy the book because of the cover because it does draw, like the cover talks to you. So I think I'm gonna put it in I'd, I'd buy it because of the cover, because I really like it. Like it really talked to me. I have some questions for you by Rebecca something, forgot her surname. I also have some questions for this author because this book was very bad. And as much as I hate the book, I also hate the cover. So. I'm gonna put it in, could be improved. I'm not even gonna put it in the I wish I could redo it because I don't even care about this book. Like, I'm so neutral about this story. I'm so neutral about everything that happened in this thriller that I don't even care. Like, I wish I could just like delete it. Like, could be improved. Bye. Some sort of questions for you. It's just a story about a woman who's like a podcaster and she teaches a class about podcasts and she has like some secret, his like some secret and like one of her students decides to make a podcast about her secret and the secret turns out to be a big blob of nothing and it's just boring. How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, another 5 out of 5. A lot of 5 out of 5s in this like 2023 uh, releases, which is good. A uh, story about a, a couple of kids whose parents die and they have to sell the house, but the house is haunted, the title of the book. I'm neutral about the cover. So I'm gonna put it in neutral. That's it. I'm not gonna. I'm not even gonna reason with it. Like it's okay. It's not his best cover. His best cover is the peaches one. Like all the peaches. A house with good bones by T. King Fisher. Horror story. Same. A haunted house story about a girl who moves back to with her mom, and once she's in the house, weird things start to happen. Some shenanigans are afoot, and whoopie de whoop, the house is haunted. The cover. I'm really not like. I never like this cover. I don't know why, but T. King Fisher needs to really make better covers because, except for What Moves the Dead, that's a good cover. But I feel like her covers do not talk to me. Like, I do not relate to her covers. 
So I'm gonna put it in the could be improved because I don't hate it, but I don't love it. So yeah. Looking Glass Sound by uh, Katrina Ward, another five out of five were on fire here, baby. And this is a convoluted story about a kid who spends his summer, I forgot where, but like somewhere near the sea. And there's like a serial killer around the time he's like spending his summer there. And he tries to figure out what happened. We find out what happened. And then he goes to college. He tells a story to his roommate. His roommate writes a story about what happened, you know, during the summers and serial killer. And then he gets pissed. And then he, he the main character, writes another book retelling the story of the roommate because he didn't tell it the way it happened and it's a very messy story but it's a perfect story and it's a perfect book and i want to own a copy i'm just extremely sad because the hardback cover that i put here is a masterpiece like i'm saying it it's a second masterpiece because i absolutely adore this cover like i don't know why i love 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 this cover and i want to own a copy of looking glass sound but the paperback and as you know, I love paperbacks and I hate hardbacks. The baby rack cover, it's like, I wish I could redo it category. Like we're on two opposite ends of the situation here. So we'll see, maybe I'll make an exception and buy the hardback, but it's also like 25 euros and I'm like, 25 euros. So yeah, we'll see. Where darkness blooms, I do not know who wrote this and I cannot see it here, it's too small. It's a story about a town who has a weird history and the adults are trying to rewrite the history and the kids are about, like, are up to no good and, like, we follow the story of our main characters who move in the town and once they move in, they're like, hmm, weird. And to be honest, I kind of forgot everything about this story because I really did not like this book, like, ugh, I hated it. But the cover, though, it's not a masterpiece, but it's i I'll buy the book because of the cover. And if I'm honest with you guys, I read this book only because of this cover. If this book had a could be improved or wish I could redo it cover, I would never have even gotten close to this book, like never. All right, she is haunting by, mm, I forgot her name and I don't wanna botch it. So I'm not even, Tran, Tran Tran something, I think so. Anyway, story about a girl who moves, who goes spend the summer in Vietnam with his dad, with her dad. And when she arrives at the house, she realizes that the house is haunted and she's gonna spend her entire summer being haunted by the house. It's a white horror, it's a cheeky white horror. I, sp I had a good time while reading it. There's some very gory, very disgusting scenes in this book, but I really enjoyed it. And the cover, I like it. And to be honest, because I bought this book for the soul, like this book, I bought it because of the cover. So it's going on the, I, bought, I buy the book because of the cover because I did buy the book because of the cover. Pineapple Street by Jenny something, a boring fiction book about a bunch of rich kids. No one has charisma, it's boring. I hated it. I do like the cover though, but I do not love the cover, so it's gonna go on neutral. I really do like, I don't know if it's the paperback or the hardback or the UK or the US version, but there's a version of this cover that I really enjoy. And that cover would go into the I'd buy the book because of the cover and I'm very happy that I did not see that cover before I read this book because I would have bought it and I would have hated myself for buying that book just because of the cover and then turning like the book turned out to be a bleh. Yellow Face by RF Kuang. I adore the simplicity of this cover and because of it, it goes into I'd buy the book because of the cover and it's a story about two writers. One of them is extremely successful and Chinese, I think, if I remember well, and the other one is not so successful and she's white. And one day the Chinese author dies and the white friend decides to take the manuscript of the Chinese one and become as, su as successful as her friend by basically stealing her manuscript. So, yay! Yay! Awesome! Amazing! It's a very good book though, so you should read it, but like, ugh, white people. I say that being a white person myself, but ugh, white people. All right, Nestlings by Nat Cassidy, a horror book that I absolutely adore, ended up on my top five as well. A story about a couple who get chosen in the New York lottery and they move into this amazing apartment building and it's all super good until <laughs> it's not because the apartment seems to be haunted. I do not hate, I do not love the cover, so I'm gonna put it in neutral because 
you know, also, oof, it's too far away, but Mary by Nat Cassidy is a masterpiece when it comes to me, like when it comes to the cover. So, you know, I haven't read it yet, but like I can tell you already that it's going to be the masterpiece next year when I do this video next year. But Nestlings is not amazing, but when you put Nestlings and Mary next to each other, it's like a harmonious, like duo of like perfection. So yeah, anyway. Happy Place by Emily Henry, the only, no, the two romance books I read this year, uh, they both were released in 2023. There's not a third one if I count it as romance and not horror, like Vampires of the Norte, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, I really dislike this book, like, I really loved it at the beginning and then I hated it, like, I just found like they were both a bunch of people, like, two people, like, pe I hate romance books where, like, they just don't know how to talk to each other. Like, I know miscommunication is a trope that a lot of you guys love, but me, I hate it because it pisses me off. Like, people just learn how to talk to each other. You're two grown-ass adults with full-time jobs, with full-time paying jobs, and you don't know how to talk to each other. Like, come on. The cover, I do like it, and because it's Emily Henry and I really like all of his her covers because they're all, like, very cohesive, and I love that, I would go into a buy because of the cover because it's very nice to look at. Uh, My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon, a horror book about our main character whose mom is, you know, she has a toxic relationship with her mom. Uh, I'm, I'm tired just thinking about this book because I really didn't like it. Uh, the mom is sick and she asks the daughter, can I move in with you for my last days? And the daughter, even though they have a very toxic relationship, she agrees to it and then we find out why and there's some hauntings, and there's some possessions, and there's some weird shenanigans, and the mother character is extremely creepy, and I hated her, even though she was very well written. Anyway, the cover is, I wish I could redo it, because I hate this cover, like, I hate, I hate covers with real people, that's it, there, I said it, ugh, real people. All right, Big Swiss by Jane Bejin, this is a 5 out of 5, I think, or 4 out of 5, almost a 5 out of 5, I really enjoyed it. It's, I don't remember if I put it a five or five, but whatever. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. It's a story about a sex therapist transcriber who gets weirdly obsessed with a patient of her sex therapist. For, you know, for her, like, a, a patient of her, the th sex therapist that she works for. And, uh, you know, we follow the story. It's hilarious. I loved it. And the cover is a masterpiece because, wow, I love that cover. I Feed Her to the Beast and the Beast is Me by... Shea Jamieson, a YA horror about a girl who is a student at the Parisian Valet uh, and she's really good, but because she's black, people don't treat her with uh, the respect and they don't give her the credit that she deserves. And one day she decides to give her soul to a demon, someone that's like laying in the catacombs in Paris. And things unfold, I'm not gonna say more. I'm gonna put this in a buy the book because of the cover because as with She is Haunting, I bought this book because of the cover, so, you know. Cam Damascus by Chuck Tingle, a conversion LG, like conversion horror book that I didn't like. I didn't enjoy this book, it was badly edited, it was a mess, like, I don't know what happened, I don't know the timeline, I didn't like anything about it. The cover, I'm neutral about it, that's it. Like, don't like it, don't hate it. Heartstopper Volume 5, I think I've talked about it already, but Heartstopper Volume 5 is a five, it's the fifth volume of Heartstopper, an LGBT graphic novel by Alice Osman about Charlie and Nick, who are two teenagers who meet in, co in school and they fall in love because they're very cute. And they get the happy ending that all queer people deserve. Check. I think out of all the Heartstopper covers, is one of my fave. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in up by the book because of the cover. The Beast You Are by Paul Tremblay. It's a short story collection by Paul Tremblay that I hated. None of the stories, zero stories in this short story collection deserve anything. Like, I didn't vibe with any story. I finished the 500 pages of this book and I hated myself for it. I bought the book because I love Paul Tremblay because all of his other books I really enjoyed. And then I bought this, it's my first Paul Tremblay book. And then I was like, ugh, why did I buy it? So I'm gonna put it in, I wish I could redo it. And I'm gonna say also, PSA, can we please stop making covers between, you know, can we stop making hardcovers and paperback covers different? 
because the hardcover version of the Beast UR is very beautiful and the Beast UR paperback version is horrible. Like, ugh. Anyway. Episode 13 is a found footage type of story. Didn't like it, didn't love it. It's a horror book. I remember stuff about this book, but it feels like a fever dream, so... I don't even, I'm not even gonna say anything about it because I forgot about it. I'm neutral about it. I do like the cover though. And I almost bought the book because of the cover. So it goes into, I buy the book because of the cover. Sister Made a Monster, a horror book about a world post-pandemic where a virus makes you either a bit violent, very violent, or extremely violent. And we follow three different characters that go through each of the you know possibilities of the virus. I listened to the audiobook and it was very enjoyable. It's very graphic, very sexual, so be careful if you go into this. The cover though, I'm gonna go with could be improved because I find it original, but I feel like the execution could be improved. It could be a I buy the book because of the cover if it was a bit better. So you know. Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates, a five out of five. I listened to the audiobook and it was a blast. Absolutely adored it. Story about a couple who go into a mountain trip. Uh, with other people there's a snowstorm they get trapped and they're in the cabin and one day you know day night every night uh, someone dies <laughs> from the group so yay uh, it's extremely enjoyable I really enjoyed it and the cover to be honest I really like it so I'm gonna go with I buy the book because of the cover Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia gave me all of the feelings at first, a horror book, I almost gave this a 5 out of 5. Well, I initially gave this a 5 out of 5, and then it turned out to be a 3.5 out of 5. A story about a woman who is a film editor, and she one day gets in contact with an old director that thinks that one of his films has a curse, and the only way to lift the curse is to fix the film, or finish the film. Uh, the cover... I initially really liked it, but the more I look at it, the more I hate it. So I'm gonna go for neutral. <laughs> Mayfly by CG Lead, I think. A story about a psychopath who meets another psychopath and they do psychopath shit together. Really liked it. 4.5 out of 5. Uh, again, please, I'm asking editors to stop making different covers for paperback and hardbacks because the paperback version of this book is hideous. But Mayfly is a, to me, in this edition, a masterpiece. I don't know why, I absolutely adore the cover, like, ugh, give me all of it. Things We Do To Our Friends by Heather something, Heather Darwin. It's a story about a girl who goes to university, she meets a bunch of kids that are like very spoiled, very rich, and she gets involved in some shenanigans with these kids. I didn't like it. It's a white horror, I think, and it was like very boring, very bland, didn't relate to anything. However, though, the cover, oh, this cover, though, oh my god. It's a masterpiece, as you can tell by my reaction. I even brought it here because I want you all to look at it. It is amazing. A masterpiece. The next one is You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight, and I almost died by reading this book because it was so boring. It's a white horror about the final girl horror trope. Not gonna say more, you don't need to know anything else about it. I do like the cover though, but I'm gonna put it in neutral because I hated this book so much. Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez. I did put it in 2023 because you guys, American people, <laughs> keep saying that this book was produced in 2023. Uh, it came out in 2019, but I do love the English cover, so I put it there. And I'm gonna put it in I Buy the Book because of the cover, because I really, really like that book and that cover. And it's a convoluted story with political touches, with like historical stuff and like a lot of like themes and symbolisms and there's a cult and there's dark forces and there's family relationships and it's like very dense, but very good. And it's, you know, Maria Enrique, like she is a masterpiece at what she does. She's a master at what she does. She's excellent. Uh, next one is Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison, horror book about cults, uh, boring vanilla, nothing to say about it. All of the characters were bland. The, the only relatable thing, that, the only thing I enjoyed about this book is that there's a Taylor Swift song in it. That's it. That's it. There's nothing else. And the cover. I do like the cover, but I'm gonna put it in neutral because I'm so neutral about this book that like, you know. Mother Daughter Murder Night is a thriller that was sold to me as Gilmore Girls featuring like murder. It is not Gilmore Girls, it is not murder, it is a boring thriller about three women that are incapable of talking to each other and that decide that they do a better job than the police. 
that's it. Also, the cover is is so ugly, so I wish I could redo it. Monstrilio by Gerardo something. I always forget the name of this author. A story about, it's a horror book about grief, about belonging, about a family, parents that lose a kid, the mom gets obsessed with it, decides to feed the lung of the deceased kid. From the lung of the deceased kid, a monster, a thing, is born. And, you know, we follow the story. I absolutely adore this book, but I hate the cover. And I wish I could redo it. And I'm, it pains me to put Monstrilio in the I wish I could redo it, but I truly wish I could redo Monstrilio cover because I feel like the reason why not that many people read this book is because of this cover. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It came from the closet, a short essay collection about how queer authors relate to queer, you know, to horror movies, like how their experience, you know, might be shaped by these horror movies. It is a book, good book. Some stories, as per usual, are better than others. A, the cover, though, is amazing, and I buy the book because of the cover. The next one is Chlorine by Jade Song, a horror book about a girl who struggles to with her identity as a human because she thinks she's a mermaid. I won't say anything else. It doesn't need more, and the cover, as I've been saying since I read this book, is a masterpiece. Like, perfection. Oh, Vampires of El Norte, a romance book, uh, like a Goodreads tries to tell us, not a horror book, about two kids who find themselves in the middle of a vampire war in Mexico and they're in love and they're toxic, they don't know how to talk to each other, but it's a good story in the end and uh, yeah, the cover, I'm neutral about it. I really liked it at first, but now I'm sorry, I have a hate relationship with this book, like I just cannot. Mr. Magic by Kirsten White, a horror book about a bunch of kids who were in a TV show and now they want to do a comeback as adults, but the TV show was cursed, yada yada, boring, I hated it. Mr. Magic cover could be improved. I don't hate it, I don't love it, but it's not. I'm not even neutral about it. I just wish it could be different, but you know. The Fake by Zoe Whithall, I think. A thriller about people who get scammed. That's it, I, there's nothing else about it. I'm neutral about the cover. I'm neutral about this book, I'm neutral about the cover. I have no feelings towards this book. The Daughters of Itzihar, I forgot the name of the author, it's a YA fantasy about two women who are in Egypt, I think. One of them has magic powers, the other one is in a forced marriage. It's a very like, you know, the setting is quite complex, but it's very good. Really enjoyed it. One of the few fantasy books that I read this year and that I liked. And the cover, I'm neutral about it. Like, meh. This Delicious Death by Kayla something, a YA horror story about a world where there's a virus that makes people want to eat humans, like human meat, but science, science, baby, uh, makes a cure that basically, you know, but through science they develop food that they can eat and that basically controls their urges to eat human meat. And one day, our group of, you know, main characters, they go to a festival and there's a drug that basically forces them into zombie, like, you know, human cannibalism mode. And they investigate what happens. It's okay. The cover, I'm neutral about it too. Handyman, Handyman Method, the worst horror book I read this year. A story about a guy who move into, moves into a house and he watches DIY YouTube videos and the YouTube videos are haunted and he decides to be weird and haunt and be an asshole to everyone around him. So, yay. Toxic man. Everywhere. The cover, neutral. Don't care about this book, don't care about the cover. Lone Women, ugh. I, this book dragged on for too long. I wish I, I would have DNF this book. I don't even care to explain to you what the book is about, but it's like a woman who has a secret and she cannot be with anyone because every time that she gets close to people, people disappear and whatever, and there's a secret. And then the secret gets revealed and it's boring and like we don't care about this book. I do like the cover. And I almost bought the book because of the cover. So it goes into Long Women. It goes into I buy the book because of the cover. The Panacea Project. A book that I actually enjoyed. It's an audiobook. And I just found it very ridiculous. Like very like <laughs> what is the situation? It's like a woman who has cancer but her, you know, her body has... The capacity of regenerating her own cells and like 
kill the cancer cells before they kill her. And basically they want to do studies on her because she's basically the cure for cancer. And that's it. That's the setting. It's really ridiculous. This could be turned into a Netflix movie and it would be like ridiculous. The cover, I'm neutral about it. I don't care. Community Board by Tana, Tanya Conlin. And this is a story about a woman who gets dumped, well, cheated on. And she moves back to her parents' house. And when she arrives there, the parents are not there because the parents are retired and they're living their best life, who God knows where. And she decides to just like, you know, stay in the house. And she checks the community board of the, Ameri you know, the house association, the neighborhood association. And the book is just that. And I just actually really enjoyed this book. Like this was so funny and I vibed with the character and there were so many ramblings and I just loved it. And the cover, I'm going to go with a buy the book because of the cover, because I almost bought this book because of the cover. So, you know, so that's the, that's all the books that I read this year that were released in 2023. What well, that I read in 2023 that were released in 2023. There's six books in the masterpiece category. And I think I'm gonna re like, you know, put them in order to kind of have a winner because you know, that would be like good. I'm gonna put Mayfly at the end because it's good, but not that good. Big Swiss is gonna be fifth. I'm gonna put Things We Do To Our Friends, third. Rouge is going to be th third, sorry. Looking Glass Sound, second. And Chlorine is going to win. I absolutely adore the cover of Chlorine. Like, it's so great. And that's about it. I hope this was... Honestly, tier ranking videos are the funniest to make because I love classifying things and I love making rankings and all of this. And I just love it. I will share the template if you want to do, you know, the same thing I did with my books and I would love to see the results because I'm pretty sure some of the books that I put in masterpiece you're going to you're going to hate them and some of the ones that I put in neutral you're going to love them because it's like with taste everyone has one and everyone can, you know, like stuff and not don't like not like other stuff. But anyway, uh very chill first video of 2023 2024 I need to get used to saying that. And this week's, uh, you know, I'll go back to my usual videos uh, soon. I only have one video left talking about like 2023 and 2024. It's my full reading wrap up with like some graphs, some stats, some like sexy graphs for you. And my 2024 reading goals and channel goals, which will be uploaded next week. So be on the lookout for that. But after that, we're done. No more talking about 2023. And we're just going to talk about good things, good reading for 2024. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are the best. I wish you all a great day, weekend, whenever you're watching this. And as per usual, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell button, comment, spread the tofu kind of love, and I'll see you guys next time for more content. Bye!